How are you doing? Is that your email every day? I mean, can you get these lights off? I think the switches are back here. The lights, the switches. Oh, yes. Uh, she shared them. With you. <laughs> Omer, Omer, can you close that door? How is everyone? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi al-lazhi nastafa. Khususan ala sayyidi rasuli wa khatam al-anbiya. Wa ala alihi al-askiya wa ashabihi al-atqiya. Amma ba'd. They say, عند ذكر الصالحين تنزل الرحمة. That when the righteous are mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy showers upon that gathering. These Tuesday gatherings of ours are nothing but that, gardens of mercy. We have an opportunity to take a peek out of our wild, crazy lives and take a look at these people who are dwellers of Jannah and listening to their stories, spending these brief moments while reflecting on precious moments of their lives, brings ruh and brings a soul back to our dreams. That inshallah, one day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us to walk in their footsteps as well. Not only is it a joy and pleasure to sit here every week and to make mention of these great figures. But I kid you not, the days that lead up to Tuesday are precious as well now. Because those days, I'm just reading through different texts and different books, and I find myself just amazed by how much there is to know about these people. Yet there's some pain in the heart, because unfortunately I'm not able to share all of these amazing and great stories these moments of inspiration that I come across and learn of their lives. Today we spend some time with Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu. He is the one that from his day of accepting Islam, Muslims were honored. He is the one that when he migrated he didn't migrate secretly. He was very bold and proud of being a Muslim and was open to all consequences involved with being a Muslim. So he announced his hijrah. He participated in all of the great battles by the side of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The first khalifa in our history to be referred to with the honorific title 
Amir al Mu'minin, the first person to establish the Muslim calendar. He is the first person to gather the Muslims together under one Imam for Salat al Taraweeh. He is also known to be the first one that would walk around in the market with his whip hanging from his shoulder. So people knew who was here and what the consequences would be for violating the rights of another. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up the lands to the east and the west during his khilafah. He is the one that set the boundaries for these cities and also finalized their affairs, made matters of jurisdiction and documentation of political affairs official. He has the honor of performing Hajj multiple times. And ultimately, before he passed away, he also performed Hajj with the living wives of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said regarding Umar, radiya, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anh, that if there was a person from my ummah that would receive nubuwa, it would be Umar. لو كان نبيا بعد لكان عمر. Because he was muhdath, he was mulham. One that was inspired by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The thoughts that came to his mind, his heart, many a times turned into revelation. He himself says that on no less than three occasions, I had proposed something to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And soon after I said it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed an ayah in the Quran. He said to the Prophet of Allah, what if we had taken Maqam Ibrahim as a place of praying salah after our tawafs, after our tawaf, and Allah Azawajal revealed the ayah, وَاتَّخِذُوا مِن مَقَامِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ مصلى. And then also when it came to some of the personal matters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the ulama have written books dedicated to muwafaqat Umar, where Umar radiallahu anhu would propose an idea and then soon after, revelation would come to support what he had proposed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are many examples, um, like how to handle and deal with the captives of Badr. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an and other sahaba gave one opinion that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ultimately selected and chose. And on the other hand, Umar radiallahu an had another position. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the ayah in support of Umar radiallahu an's opinion. مَا كَانَ لِنَبِيٍ أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ أَسْرَى حَتَّى يُثْخِنَ فِي الْأَرْضِ تُرِيدُونَ عَرَضُ الدُّنْيَا وَاللَّهُ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ That Umar radiallahu an's position was the correct one in that situation. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said regarding Umar radiallahu an, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِ بِيَدِهِ مَا لَقِيَ كَالشَّيْطَانُ سَالِكًا فَجَّنْ قَدْتُ إِلَّا سَلَكَ فَجَّ غَيْرِ فَجِّكَ That there is not a time that Umar, you walk on a path and shaitan walks on that path, but he diverts and takes another path. Shaitan is intimidated to walk on the same road as Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu There are so many moments in Umar radiallahu anh's life, basic interactions he had with the people around him, with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So many of these moments that had any one person been given even one of those moments, it was enough for them to be proud of for the rest of their life. I'll point out some of those today, inshallah, as we continue our journey in his life. But I also wanted to start with one of those stories. One time, Umar radiallahu anh sought permission from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger of Allah, I wish to go for Umrah. So Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him permission and he said, Ya akhi, ashrikna fi salih dua'ika wa la tansana. Oh my dear brother, keep me in your du'as and do not forget us. What an honor that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is requesting du'as from Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu The virtue of this person, the power and weight in his words, the maqam and closeness he had to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That the Prophet of Allah is saying, my dear brother, do not ashrikna fi salihi du'aik. Keep us in your good du'as. And do not forget us. 
In one narration, the Prophet ﷺ said that when it comes to the matters of my deen, the most firm in them is Umar. وَأَشَدُّهُمْ فِي أَمْرِ اللَّهِ Umar. That he is very strong and very firm when it comes to the matters of the deen. Umar is the son of Khattab. Khattab bin Nufayl bin Abdul Uzza bin Rabah bin Abdullah bin Qirat bin Rizah bin Adi bin Ka'b bin Lu'ay. At Ka'b, his lineage joins with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His mother's name is Hantama. Umar radiallahu an accepted Islam a few years after the earliest companions became Muslim. Most historians place his accepting of Islam around the sixth year of Nubuwa, the sixth year of prophethood. After 40 men and 11 women, at that point, he was around 26 years old. Prior to accepting Islam, Umar radiallahu an was very conflicted about Islam. He sat with his elders and was a part of the discussions regarding the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and this new movement, al-Islam. What he had heard from them was that all the fitna in the community came from Islam because Islam was creating imbalance in the political structure that already existed in Mecca, which was based off of tribalism. Islam is taking away honor given by tribe and handing honor over to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives honor to people. And that honor is earned through righteousness. In akramakum indallahi atqakum. Some things need to be centralized, while other things should be decentralized. Piety, righteousness, a person's value, can be centralized to any one prefixed value. Rather, it's what a person makes of themselves and how they walk towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the relationship they build with their creator. Umar radiallahu an, therefore, prior to Islam, ended up adopting a posture that was staunchly in opposition to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Muslims. He also participated in the torturing of some of the earlier Muslims. While he is busy in this life of being aloof, lost, following his crooked moral compass, he always had a moral compass. It's at that time it needed to be redirected, needed to be shifted a little. What he did was not something that he was forced to do. He did it because he believed it. He thought this was the real solution. But in the meantime, he didn't realize that the cooking process for this great meal, Amir al-Mu'mineen had already started. The process of this man that would one day be a legend that the Roman and Persians would shake just by hearing his name. A man that says before he passed away that today there is no one on the face of this earth. Umar radiallahu anh said, today there is no one on the face of this earth between myself and Allah. That end product, the cooking of it, the preparation had already started even while he was in opposition to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa What he didn't realize was while he was fighting the Prophet of Allah, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had his hands raised. Allahumma is al-Islam abiya habbir rajulaini ilayk. Oh Allah, give Islam to one of the two, whoever you love the most. Be Umar ibn al-Khattab or be Abi Jahl ibn Hisham. Either Umar ibn al-Khattab or Abu Jahl. So while he's hating Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, while he's opposing the, opposing the Muslims, those seeds had already taken place. And how can the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ever miss such a sincere person? There is a narration that one time Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh had an interaction with Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh prior to becoming Muslim. Ibn Mas'ud was a Muslim, Umar radiallahu anh was not a Muslim. Umar radiallahu anh was kind to Ibn Mas'ud. So Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh said, I have full hope that the Prophet's dua will reach you. 
possible at that time Umar radiallahu anh had no idea what he was even talking about. Ultimately, Umar radiallahu anh, as Imam Ahmad rahimullah narrates from Shuraih bin Ubaid, the riwayah does have some dhaf in it. He says, Umar radiallahu anh says, I one day exited my home with the intention of confronting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَوَجَدْتُهُ قَدْ سَبَقَنِي إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ So I saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had already reached the masjid before even I arrived. فَقُمْتُ خَلْفَهُ So I stood behind the Prophet of Allah waiting so he finishes his prayer and I can have a head on with him. فَاسْتَفْتَحَ سُورَةَ الْحَاقَّةِ And in that moment the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to read the verses of Surah Haqqah. فَجَعَلْتُ أَتَعَجَّبُ مِنْ تَأْلِيفِ الْقُرْآنِ This was the first time he was actually listening to the Qur'an and his ears were all open and he was standing there waiting so he just paid attention. And as he saw how the verses of the Qur'an were connected and the powerful message in the opening verses of Surah Haqqa very appropriate for this gathering because in those verses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how he dealt with stubborn, arrogant people. وَأَمَّا ثَمُودُ فَأُهْلِكُوا بِالطَّاغِيَةِ وَأَمَّا عَادٌ فَأُهْلِكُوا بِرِيحٍ صَرْصَرٍ عَاتِيَةِ And then the, 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 the story of Fir'aun is also briefly mentioned there. And then the book of deeds being presented in the right hand and the people who are honored by that. And the book of deeds being presented in the left hand and the people that are disgraced through that. As he's listening to all of this, فَقُلْتُ هَذَا وَاللَّهِ شَاعِرٌ he said, I thought to myself, this man is a poet. Otherwise, no words have ever affected my heart in such a manner before. The way these verses flow, the way they're connected, the message so powerful, everything succinct. So right when he said, I thought that he was a poet. فَقَرَأَ At that point, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recited, إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ وَمَا هُوَ بِقَوْلِ شَاعِرٍ قَلِيلًا مَا تؤمنون. This is the speech of no poet. Little do you believe. So in my mind, I thought that if he read a verse that directly responds to this thought, this fleeing thought that I had in my mind, this man must be some sort of a soothsayer, fortune teller. He must be a kahin. The next verse. And then the Prophet of Allah read, وَلَا بِقَوْلِ كَاهِنْ قَلِيلًا مَا تَذَكَّرُونَ This is the statement of no soothsayer. Little do you learn your lesson. So now he's wondering, what is this? In the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him, تَنزِيلٌ مِّن رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Revelation from the Lord of the worlds. وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْقَوِيلِ That if he were to falsely attribute a statement, لَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينَ ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينَ There would be consequences. And as Umar radiallahu anh is listening to these verses, وَإِنَّهُ لَحَقُّ الْيَقِينَ فَسَبِّحْ بِاسْمِ رَبِّكَ الْعَظِيمِ Umar radiallahu anh says, in that moment, Islam took a place in my heart, and this was the beginning of the change. He remained confused, so Anas radiallahu anh tells us what happens next. The next day, Umar radiallahu anh was very frustrated, and he said, you know what, I'm going to put an end to Muhammad and all this Islam, and I'm going to just pull it out by the root. So he pulled out his sword and was walking around in Makkah, headed towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mutaqalli the Saifi. So now while he's on the way there, another person intercepts him and says, where are you going, buddy? Because walking around in a city with a sword unsheathed was an, was, was an act of crime. It's like walking around downtown somewhere while holding some rifle. It's a red alert. What's going on here, buddy? Where are you going? What's going why do you have a gun pulled out like this? So he was walking around with a sword in a city. So the guy asked him, where are you going? So then Umar radiallahu anh said, Uridu an aqtula Muhammad. I'm going to end the affair of Muhammad. So the person said, so what are you going to do when Banu Hashim and Banu Zuhra come after you? When the other tribes come after you for killing one of theirs, what are you going to do? He said, I, I, I don't care. I will just you know, submit myself over to them and they can do whatever they want. But in the meantime, why are you so interested in defending Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Why are you so interested in defending him? And so the, true, the two begin to scuffle back and forth. In that moment, this companion said to him, 
that maybe you should go and look into your own home before you go and bother other people. So Umar radiallahu anh had no idea what he was talking about. He was caught off guard. He then said to him that go and check up on your sister, Fatima. Umar radiallahu anh was so puzzled because on one moment he's angry towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he's intending to kill him. And on the other hand, this guy is saying that first sort out your own home. So he leaves him and rushes directly to his sister's home. When he arrives there, he can hear from inside that someone is reading something. Umar radiallahu anh barges into the home. Khabab radiallahu anh was teaching them. He hides himself behind a corner. And Umar radiallahu anh approaches his sister and his brother-in-law. Unfortunately, Umar radiallahu anh was so angry, he hit his sister. When he hit her at that moment, it occurred to him that he was the abuser. Otherwise, how could a person hit his own sister? His anger and his thirst for revenge had made him engage in such a heinous act. So he sat down and was taking account of himself. And in that moment, his eyes fell upon one of the writings of a verse of the Quran. He asked for it. When it was given to him, he began to read the verses of Surah Taha. Taha ma anzalna alayka al-Qur'an li tashqa illa tadhkiratan li man yakhsha. And as he's reading these verses, he comes to the ayah, Innani ana Allahu la ilaha illa ana fa'budni wa aqim as-salata li dhikri. Indeed, I am Allah, there is no God but me. So worship me and establish prayer for my remembrance. Umar radiallahu anh then said, Take me to Muhammad. Khabab radiallahu anh, who was behind, came out in front. And he said to him, I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam making dua Thursday night, Laylat al Khamis. I heard Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam making dua on the night that precedes Thursday. Allahumma is al Islam bi Umar ibn al Khattab, O bi Amr ibn Hisham. O Allah, give Islam to Abu Jahl or Umar. And he knew that the dua of Rasulullah was coming true. So he took Umar radiallahu an to the house of Arqam radiallahu an, where the Sahaba would gather with Rasulullah during the day privately for gatherings to learn from the Prophet of Allah. They chose that particular location because it was right in the middle of the hustle bustle of town near Marwa. When the Sahaba Inside Dar al-Arqam, saw Umar radiallahu anh was on his way. And when he knocked on the door and they saw Umar radiallahu anh was there, a group of them gathered around the door. They were under the impression that Umar has come for some form of confrontation. And as soon as he enters, before he even reaches the Prophet of Allah who is inside, they would deal with him. So at the door, وَعَلَى الْبَابِ حَمْزَةً وَطَلْحَةً وَنَاسٌ مِنَ أَصْحَابِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ A group of them around the door, including Hamza رضي الله عنه. Hamza رضي الله عنه became Muslim just days before Umar رضي الله عنه. Six days before, in some narrations. So Hamza رضي الله عنه, juggernaut type of human being, he says, don't worry, let Umar come. We'll see what his intentions are. If he has any ill intentions, I'll deal with him myself. When they open the door, Umar رضي الله عنه enters. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was the, in the inside room. فَقَامَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ حَتَّى أَتَى عُمَرَ The Prophet of Allah stood up and he approached Umar ibn Khattab رضي الله عنه. فَأَخَذَ بِمَجَامِعِ ثَوْبِهِ Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam grabbed his garments. And then Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shook him, gave him a bit of a, a shake. And he said, Umar, will you not stop? Do you want Allah's revelation to come for you and mention Allah's punishment for you in the dunya and in the next? Do you not see the example of Walid bin Mughira? And then the Prophet ﷺ holding him made dua, Oh Allah, put Islam in his heart and honor this deen with the acceptance of this man. In one riwayah, Umar radiallahu anh fell to his knees and he said, 
اشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله a page in history was turned love compassion dua can change the path of any human being when the right person's attention is directed towards you great things can happen umar radiyallahu an remembered that moment for the rest of his life before he passed away he was once passing by a valley and he was in tears so one of his servants said why are you crying and to that umar radiyallahu an says i was a shepherd not really worth much but one day i saw the prophet of allah and i fell in love with him and i accepted islam and today i stand where there is no one between me and allah on the face of this earth the turning point of his life was darul arqam umar radiyallahu an after he becomes muslim he says to the prophet of allah that our messenger of allah now that we're muslim how about we go to the haram and pray salah together until that point the muslims prayed salah privately out of fear that the quraish would react in an illogical way they would hurt someone umar radiyallahu anhu said our messenger of allah if that happens and we live then we live alhamdulillah and allah honored us by being able to worship him in front of the kaaba and if we die we die in the cause of allah as the young people today would say yolo we're doing this so the muslims made two safuf they made two lines fa akhrajnahu fi safaini hamzatun fi ahadihima wa ana fil akhar there were two lines on the side of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet of allah was in the middle at the front of the first line was hamza ibn abdul muttalib radiyallahu ta'ala an and in the second line at the front was umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu an and when we entered into the haram hatta dakhala al-masjid fanadrat uh, fanadrat ilayya quraish wa ila hamza the quraish saw my face and they saw hamza's face and you can see there was a fear in their eyes they wanted to get up but they remained seated because they knew this wasn't worth it it would end bad fasamani rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yawma idhin al-faruq so it was that day rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam named me al-faruq and therefore the honorific title of umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu an is al-faruq alladhi farraq Allah bihi bayna al-haqq wal batil the one who allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used to distinguish between the right and the wrong a man who always spoke the truth who was not afraid of the consequences who spoke his heart and was inspired by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala umar radiyallahu ta'ala an was by the side of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam throughout the prophet's life he was someone who nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam would take advice from he was one of the people who the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was commonly seen with even in his own personal time the companions they say that it was a normal scene for us that we would be waiting for salah and as the prophet of allah would enter into the masjid in his right hand would be the hand of abu bakr as-siddiq radiyallahu an and in his left hand would be the hand of Umar ibn Khattab radiyallahu anhu a scene that is so precious the most beautiful view in the world three beloved human beings friends servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala each of them leaving a legacy that is unparalleled the prophet of Allah the sun right in the middle and the stars surrounding him one urdu poet this is exactly what he says in jagmaga jagmaga taro mein mahtab ka alam kya hoga that in between these twinkling stars these shining stars that are through the sky imagine the beauty of the moon jab unke gulamon ke dar par jhukte the salati ne alam phir koi bataye aqa ke darbar ka alam kya hoga jab unke ghulamon ke dar par jhukte the salati ne alam that when it came to the servants of the prophet of allah these companions the romans and persians their emperors fell at their knees in their courts jab unke ghulamon ke dar par jhukte the salati ne alam the kings of the world put their knees to the ground in front of the servants of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam phir koi bataye aqa ke darbar ka alam kya ho 
Then someone tried to explain the beauty of the gathering of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the greatness of that gathering, the barakah of that gathering, the magnitude of a gathering. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, these senior Sahaba, the women, the children, each of them dwellers of Jannah, gathered together in Medina Munawwara in Majd al Nabwi. Umar radiallahu an was appointed as Khalifa by Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an. A person can easily argue this appointing happened against Umar radiallahu an's will. Umar radiallahu an did not want this. He repeatedly said to Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an, I do not want this. And no matter how much he insisted, Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an, before passing away, he said to Umar, stop rejecting it. And just listen to me now, I have little time left in the dunya. Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu an passes away. And Umar radiallahu an now has the responsibility of facing the ummah. The first sermon he delivered, he climbs the mimbar and he stood where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would stand when delivering a sermon. And Umar radiallahu an said, I am in no right, I am in no way worthy of standing where the Prophet of Allah stood. And he takes a step down. And then he was standing where Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an stood and he said, I have no right and I am not worthy to stand where Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an stood. And then he took one step down. And at this point, Umar radiallahu an he stood there and he cried. In one narration, he said, before he spoke, in a soft voice speaking to himself, he said, Abu Bakr, what have you done to me? What did you do? What kind of burden did you load on my shoulders? كان أول كلام تكلم به عمر حين صعد المنبر إن قال اللهم إني شديد فليني So before he started his sermon, he made dua to Allah, Oh Allah, I am too tough. So soften me. وَإِنِّي ضَعِيفٌ فَقَوِّنِي I am weak, so strengthen me. Oh Allah, give me strength and make me soft. Umar radiallahu an then starts his speech. And from the first things that he said, he said, Ayyuhan nas, ibtalakumullahu bi wa abtalani allahu bikum. O people, ibtalakumullahu bi. I am a great test for you. Allah has sent me as a test upon you. Wa abtalani allahu bikum. And at the same time, Allah has tested me by making you my subjects. You say, Balagani and Nasa Khafu Shiddati Wahabu Gildati. People say that Umar is too tough, Umar is too rough. Know that my toughness and my roughness was to balance out the softness of my predecessors. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Laqad ishtada Umar wa Rasulullah bayna adhurina. That they people say that Umar was very tough even while the Prophet was alive. People they say, Ishtada Arena wa Abu Bakr, wa Ilayna Dunahu, wa Alina Dunahu, that uh, he was tough while Abu Bakr was alive, even though Abu Bakr was a Khalifa and not him. So he was tough during their times, even though he wasn't Khalifa. وقد صارت, وقد صارت إليه, and now he is the ruler? How are we going to handle this guy? الناس, he said, Oh, people know that. That toughness isn't going anywhere, it is here for you too. But for those of you who are God-fearing and just, you have nothing to worry about. The oppressor, those that have done wrong, you have a lot to worry about. Because you will have to deal with me directly. As for people that are righteous and who choose the right path and are submitting themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will find me more soft than they can be to one another. O oh people, there are rights that you have over me. 
So let me tell you what your rights are. People, when they deliver their inaugural talk, their speech, they talk about their vision, what they're going to accomplish. They talk about what people need to do for them. Umar radiallahu anh flips the script, and you can see that he understood the statement of Rasulullah alayhi salatu salam, Sayyidul Qawm Khadimuhum, that the leader of the people is their servant. So he starts off by saying, what rights will you have over me? لَكُمْ عَلَيَّ أَلَّا أَجْتَبِي شَيْئًا مِنْ خِرَاجِكُمْ I promise you the money that is given to me from your wealth, I will keep none of it for myself, and neither will I go around taking what is yours. And any spoils of wars that come, they will be protected for you unless there is a shari right, a religious right granted to me to hold it back. Otherwise your wealth will be yours. وَلَكُمْ عَلَيَّ أَنْ أَزِيدَ عَطَايَاكُمْ وَرَزَاقَكُمْ إِنشَاءَ your right over me is that I will increase your stipends. And I will bring more wealth to you. And I will be more generous to you. I will give you. You can guarantee with me, I will not bring any harm to you. This is your right above me. That I will bring no harm to you. your right upon me is that if you are sent somewhere, if you are sent in an army to go face an enemy, that your family behind will be my family. فَأَنَا أَبُو الْعَيَالِ I will take care of the family. حَتَّى تَرْجِعُوا إِلَيْهِمْ فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ So be conscious of Allah. وَأَعِينُونِي عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ And help me عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ Against you بِكَفِّهَا عَنِّي by controlling yourself and not doing haram or doing evil, so therefore I have to deal with you. Deal with your own affairs. He's putting the onus of righteousness and accountability on the individual. That if your matter comes to me, I will have to deal with it. But the way you help me in dealing with you is take care of your own affairs. Look after yourself. Just as you are helping me deal with you, I need you to also help me deal with me. وَأَعِينُونِي عَلَىٰ نَفْسِي بِالْأَمْرِ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَالنَّهْنِ عَنَ الْمُنْكَرِ By commanding and advising what is good and prohibiting what is evil. وَإِحْضَارُ النَّاسِ فِي مَا وَلَّانِيَ اللَّهُ مِنْ أُمُورِكُمْ وَإِحْضَارُ النَّسِيحَةِ فِي مَا وَلَّانِيَ اللَّهُ مِنْ أُمُورِكُمْ And by always being here to advise me when it comes to matters related to you. And then Umar رضي الله عن starts his khilaf. When Umar radiallahu an is Khalifa, he makes it his responsibility to look after the affairs of people. He is concerned. He sits every day to listen to the cases. Umar radiallahu an has an open door policy. Anyone can come to him. Umar radiallahu an during his Khilafa, he would deal with the broader affairs during the day, during the day and during the night. He roams the streets of Medina Manawara on foot to make sure there is no one that is left unsatisfied. If there, are mother, if there is a mother that hasn't fed her child, Umar radiallahu an carries the food on his own back to her. If Umar radiallahu an hears there is a lady sitting at home remembering the touch of her husband because her husband has gone somewhere to serve the Muslims and he is in some battle off fighting, Umar radiallahu, Umar radiallahu an hears that woman's longing and then takes care of her affairs by passing a decree that no soldier should stay away from his wife for so long. Then after that, come back to your family, take care of your needs, be at home, take care of your women, be there for your children, and then go back. Balance. Everything has to be done right. Everything has a time and a place. One night, Ibn Umar radiallahu an says that I was with my father and Umar radiallahu an he decided to spend the night with the people. There was a group of people that had come. He decided to spend the night with them. So he said to his son, that how about both of us spend this night protecting the people, watching over, the, watching over them, doing hirasa, night duty. They agreed. So they spent the night, فَبَاتَ يَحْرُسَانِهِمْ وَيُصَلَّانِ مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَهُمَا They spent the night protecting the people, guarding them, praying salah all night. So Umar radiallahu an heard he heard a child crying. There was a young infant crying. 
فتوجه نحوه فقال لأمه اتق الله وحسني إلى صبيك So Umar رضي الله عنه went to where the child was and he found out who the mother was and said to the mother be mindful of Allah and look after your child your child's crying so much for so long look after your child He went away ثم عاد إلى مكانه فسمع بكاءه Later on in the night, he hears that night, child crying profusely for a long period. Umar radiallahu anhu fa'ada ila ummihi. He says to the mother that, Ittaqillah wa hasani ila sabiyyik. That be mindful of Allah, look after your child. When this happens two or three times, the mother then uh, says to him, Ya Abdullah, that I have been trying to keep this child. She speaks to Umar, she doesn't know who he is. She says, Oh servant of Allah, oh brother. I've been trying to put this child to sleep all night. You may think I am a evil mother, but the truth is that there's nothing that I can do to calm my child because I have been working on weaning my child off of nursing and he is persistent on continuing to nurse. My child is hungry. I don't want to feed my child myself. I want to get the child onto solids. I don't want to nurse the child anymore. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, Lima, why are you forcefully weaning the child off? قالت, because Umar ibn al-Khattab has a policy that he only allocates a stipend for children who are no longer nursing from their mothers. And I need help taking care of my child and the only way is to wean the child off and I need that stipend. So Umar radiallahu anh asked, وَكَمْ لَهُ How old is this child? قَالَتْ كَذَا وَكَذَا شَهْرًا She said, a few months. So Umar radiallahu anh said, don't rush the child. Pray Fajr Salah uh, uh, with us. Umar radiallahu anh led Fajr Salah. People heard Umar radiallahu anh leading. وَمَا يَسْتَبِينُ النَّاسُ قِرَاءَتَهُ However, they couldn't tell what Umar radiallahu anh was even saying in Salah. من غلبة البكاء because he cried so much in that prayer. فلما سلم after he finished his prayer, Umar رضي الله عنه turned to the congregation and he continued crying. يا بؤس لعمر كم قتل من أولاد المسلمين. Umar, how many children did you kill by your policy? How much harm did you bring to the people? Were you not thinking? How many mothers have forcefully taken their children off of nursing? Ya Bu'sa li Umar Kam qatala min awlaad al-Muslimin And then Umar radiallahu anh Thumma amara munadiyan He called a person and said Make the announcement La ta'ajalu subyanakum ala al-fitam Don't forcefully take your children off of their mother's milk because we promise that from now on, every Muslim child, regardless of how old they are, will be given their stipend. We will give it to everyone. فَكَتَبَ بِذَلِكَ إِلَى الْآفَاقِ And he had this decree then sent to all the Muslim leaders across the world. That from now on, every child will be treated equally. Umar radiallahu's hand was on the pulse of the people. How many of us are in leadership positions? and have no idea what's actually going on with the people. We are stuck in our boardrooms talking to the same five people and have not had conversations with the individuals in our community. The state of the ummah is such that the people who are in those communities, in those families, in those businesses, in those schools, are terrified to even talk to their heads. How do we go and even talk to them? Because anything we say to them, they will take it personally and not listen objectively this is not about them, this is about us. Umar radiallahu anh could have been defensive there. He could have argued, and I'm sure an intelligent mind like Umar radiallahu anh could have presented a hundred arguments. But he understood that moment wasn't about him, it was about the children. It wasn't about the mother, it wasn't about the other person, it was about the children. So Umar radiallahu anh understood that his harshness, or this policy that he had created without doubt, based off of shura, was not considerate of how it was implemented and how it affected those that were actually recipients of the stipend. When Umar radiallahu anh sees it from that angle, his eyes open up. And he changes his policy immediately. 
Umar radiallahu an, where on one side he had such um, dominance, he had such strength. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened up Persia and Sham, the Roman Empire, at his feet. This did not result in any arrogance on his part. Because he always remembered what his origins were, where this whole journey started. Some muhaddithun say that Umar radiallahu anh had engraved on his ringer, on his ring, a statement. Kathabil mawti wa'idha. Death is the best advisor. So whenever he needed a little advice, he would just read that ring and it said there, death is the best advisor, so control yourself and work for what's after death. Don't get caught with the luxuries of this dunya. They say that Umar radiallahu anh lived a very simple life. He would give a khutbah and while delivering the khutbah, one of the companions decided to count the number of patches on his garment. And there were 12 of them. He's the Amir al-Mu'mineen. He has access to all the wealth of the world. Look at the leaders today and their pomp and Umar radiallahu anh's simplicity. He could have just bought another garment or taken one from the Bayt al-Mal, but no. Umar radiallahu anh understood that amana was amana. Trust is trust. The wealth that we sit on as heads of states is not our wealth. The wealth that we sit on as masjid and madaris and institution managers, this is not our wealth. If I am raising funds for orphans, it's not for me to live a life of luxury, it's for those orphans. If I'm raising funds for the members of my community and for the functioning of the masjid, it's not for me to take that money and have lavish meals. It's for supporting and providing for the masjid. There is a responsibility here. The ulama of the past, Sheikh Yahya Kandahlavi, his example, our Sheikh would always mention it. He would say, when he would come to madrasa, he would come with two pens. One pen he would use, given by the madrasa, to write all affairs related to madrasa. And as soon as it was time to write something personal, he would put that pen away, pull out his personal pen, and write from there. He would take food from home to the madrasa to eat, and it, before lunch, he would tell one of the students to place the food next to the boiler for heat, to heat it up. So it would sit next, right next to the boiler and it would, by heat transference, it would heat his food up and at the end of the month, he would give the madrasa a contribution for benefiting from the reminisce, the steam that emitted from the boiler. These are people that had taqwa, that understood that this all came with accountability. Umar radiallahu anh's humbleness, uh, we can say as well, was matched by none. There is an incident. There are two references for this incident. On one side, you have Imam Al Waqidi, rahimahullah ta'ala, who narrates the story. When Waqidi, rahimahullah ta'ala, narrates the story, he narrates it in his Futuh al Sham, and he, adds, he attributes this incident to a Persian soldier, no, sorry, a Roman soldier. Even though the narration that Waqidi presents is weak, he is an imam in tarikh and also in sira. So the ulama do accept this narration of his. He attributes it to a person by the name of Wafiq bin Musafir al-Ghassani. On the other hand, Imam Tabarani rahmatullahi alayhi in his tarikh Rusuli wal Muluk, he narrates a similar incident, but instead of Wafiq bin Musafir, he attributes it to Hurmuzan which is probably the more common narration. This narration as well, as far as the Sanad goes, has its complications. Regardless, Hurmuzan was a Persian general who came to Medina Munawwara to speak with Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh. When he came to Umar radiallahu anh, he dressed in the most pompous garment that he had. He wore beautiful garments and he had a he, they placed a, a, a crown on his head, which was adorned with pearls. He asked the people where he could meet Umar radiallahu anh, so they went to look for him. He went to Umar radiallahu anh's home, did not find him there. Someone said he might be in the masjid. He went to the masjid. They told him, 
that he went, Umar radiallahu an, jalasa fil masjid li waftin qadimu alayhi min al-Kufa, that there was a, uh, a group of people that came from Kufa to meet with Umar, that's where we saw him last. So he went to the masjid to look for him there. And he found no one there. So then this Hurmuzan was with his whole group of people. He went to the streets of Medina, saw some people there and said, where is your leader? So one person said that Umar is actually in the masjid. They said, I just came from there. He wasn't there. He said, no, when Umar radiallahu anh was reading the Kufan group, he had a hooded garment on him. So Umar radiallahu anh is probably still in the masjid. You probably didn't notice him because he had his hood over his head and you missed him. فَإِنَّهُ نَائِمٌ فِي مَيْمَنَةِ الْمَسْجِدِ مُتَوَسِّدٌ بُرْنُسَهُ So then they came back to the masjid. And when they came back to the masjid, they saw a man lying there in the corner of the masjid with a shawl under his head, the hood over his face. They didn't even notice he was there. Hun Muzan is looking left and right and he sees no soldiers. He sees no guard there. So puzzled because he had never seen a head of state so casual, so relaxed. The companions, everyone in Medina Munawwara was there. It was a big meeting. The Persian general, Umar radiallahu anh. So, right when he was going to wake him up, the Sahaba, they said, stop. Let our Amir sleep. He's a busy man. Let him sleep. Finally, when Umar radiallahu an woke up, that person, he said to Umar radiallahu an, Hakamta fa'adilta fa'aminta fa'nimta. When you pass judgment among people, you were just. So you are safe from them and you sleep in peace. This is what I see here. In the narration of Tabrani, while waiting for Umar radiallahu an, Hurmuzan said to one of the Sahaba, فَيَنْبَغِي لَهُ أَنْ يَكُونَ نَبِيًّا This must be a prophet of yours. فَقَالُوا بَلْ يَعْمَلُ عَمَلَ الْأَنْبِيَاءَ He is no prophet, but he lives by the example of the Anbiya alayhi salam. Umar radiallahu an lived a life of justice. He was leading Fajr Salah. And a man plunged into Umar radiallahu an and stabbed him. He was leading Fajr Salah. And still in that first rakah. And all of a sudden the congregation began to hear, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Someone's hearing Allahu Akbar. There's this noise. People are not even sure what happened. They heard Umar radiallahu an reading, he stopped. And as he fell, he said, Qatalani o akalani al kalb that I've just been injured. Someone killed me. Or a dog just came and attacked me. So the people that were nearby, they saw this person. It was still dark. They jumped on him. And every person that attacked him, 13 of them, he stabbed all of them out of which seven died. When they finally got hold of him, the man had a double-edged dagger. He then killed himself. As Umar radiallahu anh fell, he reached back and grabbed the hand of Abdurrahman bin Awf radiallahu anh, faqaddamahu and brought him forward. Those that were nearby saw what happened in the front saf. Those that were in the back, they had no idea. All the people at the back knew was that they couldn't hear Umar anymore. And everyone was just saying, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. فَصَلَّى بِهِمْ عَبْدُ الرَّحْمَانِ بْنَ عُوف صَلَاةً خَفِيفَةً So Abdul Rahman bin Awf radiallahu anh briefly led the salah. فَلَمَّا انصرفوا When salah finished, they came rushing to Umar radiallahu anh. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh was in the front, so Umar radiallahu anh held his hand. Ya Ibn Abbas, unzur man qatalani. Go check who stabbed me. So he came back and said, Ghulamul Mughira, that 
that it was the servant of Mughira bin Shu'ba radiallahu an, his slave, he's the one who stabbed you. So then Umar radiallahu an's first words, Alhamdulillah alladhi lam yaj'al maytati biyadi rajulin yadda'i al-islam. All praises to Allah that I have not been killed by a Muslim. He was not a Muslim. Had I been killed at the hands of the Muslims, this would have hurt even more. But I was just. I took care of my people and they loved me. This man, his story was, he was a loyalist to the Persians, the Persian royals. He makes his way to Medina Munawwara and he begins to plan a way to attack Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anh. He saw him vulnerable at the time of Fajr Salah and he plunged onto Umar radiallahu anh and stabbed him. So they took Umar radiallahu anh to his home and people were surrounding him and the Muslims had been afflicted with a calamity the match of never before and they had seen some a Khalifa had been, had been stabbed. Umar radiallahu anh was given some liquid. He drank it, it came out of his stomach from the wound. They then gave him milk, he drank the milk and it came out. فَعَلِمُوا أَنَّهُ مَيِّتْ So then people knew that he was going to die. There was no ilaj for something like this. The, de- the wound was deep and he was going to pass away. Umar radiallahu anh called his son, Abdullah bin Umar. And he said to him, go and check how much I owe. How much money do I owe? So they checked his affairs and they found that he owed close to 86,000 in coins. How do these people stack up so much debt even though they live simple lives? For the sake of giving. For the affairs of people. If there was a need, if there was a battalion being sent off somewhere and everyone was giving, they would borrow money and give themselves. So the first advice of Umar radiallahu anh to his son is that go and pay off this debt of mine. Make that your first responsibility that as I die, take care of my debt. He then said to him, Intalik ila Aisha. Go to Aisha radiallahu anha and say to her, فَقُلْ يَقْرَأُ عَلَيْكَ عُمَرُ السَّلَامَ That Umar gives his salam to you. وَلَا تَقُلْ أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And do not say أَمِيرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ when you give my salam. فَإِنِّي لَسْتُ الْيَوْمَ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَمِيرًا For I am no longer their leader. Now I have been relieved of this burden that Abu Bakr placed on my shoulders. And then say to her that the servant Umar seeks permission to be buried with his two friends. فَسَلَّمَ وَاسْتَأْذَنَ ثُمَّ دَخَلَ عَلَيْهَا Ibn Umar radiallahu anh went to our mother Aisha, sought her permission, and he found her, وَجَدَهَا قَاعِدَةً تَبْكِ He found her sitting there crying. He gave her salam and then sought permission. Aisha radiallahu anha said something that only that person can say who was taught generosity by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam step by step. No other insan could have said what she said. Kuntu uridu hali nafsi wa la uthirannahu bihi al yawma ala nafsi. I wanted that space for myself. But the Prophet of Allah taught me to be generous. So I will give that space to you, Omar. How? How, how, how? I don't understand. She could have been buried with her beloved. How much did she love the Prophet? Being next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But she knew that her love for the Prophet of Allah would not diminish one bit, regardless of how far or close she was to him. But the Muslim Ummah will always need to know who Umar was because who he was. He was their Amir al Mu'mineen. So she put her personal desire on the back burner and pushed forward a message for Muslims till the end of times. وَصَاحِبَاكَ فَلَا أَنْسَاهُمَا أَبَدَا مِنَّ السَّلَامُ عَلَيْكُمْ مَا جَرَ الْقَلَمُ 
Umm al-Mu'mineen Hafsa radiallahu anha, who was also the daughter of Umar radiallahu anha, heard that her father had been stabbed. She rushed to see him. She, the Sahaba, they say, فَلَمَّا رَأَيْنَاهَا قُمْنَا When we saw her, we stepped away. فَوَلَجَدْ عَلَيْهِ فَبَكَتْ عِنْدَهُ سَعَةً She sat down next to her, Baba, and she cried. The people outside the house can hear her crying. Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu says, the last time I saw Umar radiallahu anhu, his head was in his son Abdullah's lap and his son was stroking his father's head and bringing him comfort. فَقَالَ لَهُ ذَعْ خَدِّي بِالْأَرْضِ Umar radiallahu anhu said, put me on the ground. فَقَالَ هَلْ فَخِذِي وَالْأَرْضُ إِلَّا سَوَى What difference does it make if you're in my lap or on the ground? So Umar radiallahu anhu firmly said, فَأَخَدِّي بِالْأَرْضِ لَا أُمَّ لَكَ Very Umar, light statement. Put me on the ground. And then when Umar radiallahu anhu's head is put on the ground, he said, وَيْلِي وَوَيْلٌ لِأُمِّي إِلَّمْ تُغْفَرْ لِي That what if Allah doesn't forgive me? How wretched will I be? And how wretched of a child did my mother give birth to? If I am not forgiven. فَفَاضَتْ نَفْسُهُ And he passed away. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu was 63 years old when he passed away according to the narration of Shabi. And according to the narration of Salim bin Abdullah bin Umar, Umar radiallahu anhu passed away at the age of 65. According to the riwayah of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu kana Umar, Umar radiallahu anhu was 66 years old. Regardless, he was somewhere in his 60s when he passed away. Ja'far bin Muhammad narrates from his father that when Umar radiallahu anhu was washed and he, he was shrouded and carried for burial, waqafa alayhi aliyun. Ali radiallahu anhu stood at his head. Faqala, and he said, there is no person on the face of this earth more beloved to me that I meet Allah with his book of deeds than the one shrouded in front of me. I wish his book of deeds were mine. And I can meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this man's amal. Umar radiallahu an lived a life of honor, of service to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Service to his people. A man conscious of his relationship with Allah and constantly worried about meeting his creator. So many stories that need to be shared so we understand what kind of leader he was. During the year of famine, he forcefully starved himself, citing that how can I eat while my subjects are hungry and starving? This is how you lead. You don't lead by sleeping at home, being distant from your subjects. You lead by being there with them in the trenches in their most difficult times. Your hand is on their pulse and you're not just lecturing them from a, from a seat. Rather, you're with them. You're walking with them. You're talking with them. You're in their markets. You're with their families. You're standing at the burial of their family members. You know you're a good leader when the people who talk to you from your congregation are not just your immediate friends, but it's every individual from your congregation that comes to you and talks to you. That when you're putting your shoes on in the masjid, you can know what kind of leader you are by seeing how many people just coming in and out of the masjid feel comfortable saying salam to you. What kind of person are you? Umar radiallahu anh, Stories unshared, how he dealt with the non-Muslims during his time. How he deals with a Jewish, a Christian lady that comes to him asking for help. What does Umar radiallahu anhu do? How does he help her? And there is a list of incidents. All of these take us back to a core lesson. And that lesson is, no matter what position you're in, in society, no matter where you are in life, Always understand that your essence and your core must be muwafiq, must coincide with revelation. Your character is softer than anyone's. 
Your intelligence is brighter than anyone's. Your words are more eloquent and sharper than anyone that you can interact with. Your justice and your moral compass is unwavering. The ground that you stand on praises you for standing on it. The land that you are buried in is a land that makes dua for you. Every person that sees you, every Muslim that says salam to you, just like Umar ibn al-Khattab, they say salam, As-salamu alayka ya amir al-mu'mineen, sahiba rasulillah, the companion of the Prophet of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to follow their footsteps and give us strength and iman, guidance. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala beautify us with their character. May He give us even a few moments of love for them and the ability to truly imitate them. Allahumma wafiqna lima tuhibu wa tarda wa sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allah